Hey, what's going on, everybody? In this video, we're going to be doing a book review of Other Minds by Peter Godfrey Smith. I picked up this book because it combines two of my favorite things that aren't history uh, that I like to read, which are philosophy and the life sciences. And the subtitle is The Octopus, the Sea, and the Deep Origins of Consciousness. And apparently, the premise of this book is basically that certain um, uh, animals in the cephalopods such as octopuses, and yes, it's octopuses, not octopi, apparently. Um, certain octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish apparently might have, like, really high order intelligence and uh, consciousness. These animals may have developed consciousness, which would make them the only other, like, animal group besides us that has, like, evidence of having a consciousness, or being conscious, having a consciousness, I don't know. One of those two things. But anyways, after I began reading, I did find out that this book actually was a combination of those two fields of study. Unfortunately, the philosophical portions of the book definitely were not as good as the biological um, chapters and segments in the book. Alright, so let's start with some of the stuff I didn't like with the book first. And probably the main thing is that even though the premise of the book is that certain animals in the cephalopods are supposed to have consciousness, there's really not much... Um, solid structured argumentation as to why the author or other scientists uh, might believe this is the case and uh, it's really kind of up in the air and vague and it just kind of left me wondering like you know um, what <laughs> basically um, every now and then he brings up um, either some studies or some anecdotal evidence uh, that shows you know uh, like octopus is doing like really smart or cool things or something like that and then he like undercuts the argument by saying right for that well even though they do these things it's really not that rare in the animal world for animals to do behavior such as this so i it's left it left me wondering what, what was the point in telling me i guess uh but yeah there just really wasn't much there on the philosophical side i guess also, another thing I didn't like about this book in particular, and I've seen it in a couple books that I've read this year, and I hope it's not like a new trend that's happening, is that um, there are footnotes in the book, at the end of the book, like like normal, like, like many books do. However, there's no in-text citation for those footnotes, so I'm not sure how you're supposed to know like when to go into the back of the book. Um, I didn't even know there were footnotes until I finished the book and there were still like 20 or 30 pages left and it was just footnotes and I was like oh okay and I I didn't read them because I didn't want to like keep going back and forth like again after I finished the book. So yeah that's just kind of weird. I hope publishers don't keep doing that. I don't I don't really understand why they do that. Like it's super easy just to put in like a superscript somewhere you know one or two or whatever just to let you know there's a footnote somewhere in the book, but yeah, that was really annoying. Um, oh, and one last thing is the end of the book was super, super abrupt. Um, he has a bunch of um, uh, anecdotes because he uh, does a lot of scuba diving himself, and that's where he gets a lot of his material for the book. And actually, that's pretty good, and we're going to get to that in a moment. Um, but he's sort of just talking about like his favorite spot that he always um, like uh, visited for his research and just for fun and all that. And then all of a sudden, the with like no warning or anything, the book sort of just like ends. Um, there's no like wrap up or review or like resummarizing of like what the main premises of the book are. It just sort of st like stops almost like within like a paragraph, and it just it was kind of a jarring end to a book to be honest. So that was kind of weird. But all right, let's uh, move on to some of the good stuff. Um, like I was just saying earlier. The author, his passion does come across in the pages really good from what he writes because he's like an avid scuba diver and he, when he found, he calls it Octopolis, um, him and one of his friends, uh, he, where a bunch of octopu uh, octopuses um, live every year in a certain area in this bay that he likes to scuba dive in. And he spent, you know, whole days and just tons of hours just filming and uh, recording and just watching without equipment, all that sort of stuff. Uh, these octopuses and cut, uh, cuttlefish in their natural habitat and that's where he gets a lot of the anecdotal evidence from and so it does come across as really authentic and genuine especially like when he's talking about you know what oct what the octopuses do when he's in their presence you know such as like you know t dragging him along and like showing him stuff and you know it's just very it's really interesting and it does come across really well and you can just tell that he's super passionate <laughs> about his subject matter 
Um, I will say, too, he does have some, even though I think the general argument of the whole um, cephalopods having consciousness or something, that is very up in the air and kind of vague throughout the book. It's really, not, there is no, like, argument for that, I guess. Um, there's not even much evidence that he, like, kind of just says, you know, look at this, this, or this. It's more just, you know, these things happen sometimes. But anyways... Um, he does have really good philosophical musings, <laughs> I guess that's the only way I can put it, uh, while he's, um, just describing all these, um, anecdotes of his own personal, um, adventures with octopuses and stuff. Um, one, the one that stuck with me the most is he talks about how basically vibrant their lives are and like how they do all these things and they can try and relay all these emotions or, you know, stuff like that, I guess. Um, but octopi, or octopuses apparently only, and cuttlefish only live for about a year or two or three at the most, for, uh, for most species anyways, um, in the wild. So he's talking about how he wonders why, it makes me wonder why, these animals that seem to have, um, basically all these extra capabilities and an innate, innate sense of something at least, um, why do they basically just fall apart and die? super super quickly and he, he compares it to another cephalopod the novelist which basically doesn't do anything and it can like live for like decades as compared to um an octopus which like i said will basically just like die and fall apart within a year or two so yeah that was definitely um really poignant i guess made me think a lot um some other interesting things i took away from the book is for example while an octopus can like kind of central has like something of a central nervous system where you know its brain can like the central brain can kind of sort of just direct the whole body and stuff each arm of an octopus essentially um can be proven to have a mind of its own if that makes sense it's hard to explain i guess and the arm can act independently of the rest of the body and what the body kind of tell or the yeah it's hard to explain but i thought that was kind of neat how you can basically have you have the octopus and then the arms of the octopus all working independent but together at the same time. It's kind of a strange thought, but yeah, it was definitely kind of interesting. But yeah, overall, it was written really well, and the anecdotes and his like personal memoirs, basically, of his time uh, scuba diving with octopi octopuses um, is really cool. But like I said, the whole argument for the evidence of consciousness and an independent... Um, and an independent uh, branch of animals developing consciousness of, uh, away, uh, separate from us really was quite lacking in my opinion. But um, there is another book. Um, when I bought this one, I discovered that there's another book called Soul of an Octopus. So I'm hoping maybe I'm going to pick that one up and maybe that'll fill in some of the gaps that this book left, maybe. But yeah, this, def this book definitely got me started on something, I think. But um, overall, I'm going to give this book, Other Minds, The Octopus of the Sea, The Deep Origins of Consciousness by Peter Guthrie Smith. I'm going to give this book three and a half stars because overall it was still an enjoyable and fun read. It just didn't deliver kind of on the main promise that it did. So, but yeah, overall three and a half stars to Other Minds. And always remember, read victoriously.